sorry, I turned the, I turned it off. The benefits are, is that uh, with speakers, when they get organized, the first things they want to do is to improve their working conditions. So in fact, if yeah. you are about to upgrade a SOLIDWEB management system, it's a, it's a, okay. So I think it's, a, it's an excellent opportunity if you are able to move together in the same direction. You upgrade uh, the SOLIDWEB management system, and it's of course very needed, uh, but at the same time you manage to uh, improve the working condition of those who have been recycling for the past uh, century. So if you can do the two of them at once, I think it's perfect. The, the main problem, and um, as you already know, is that sometimes uh, we get more obsessed about upgrading the system to be very similar to Europe or Paris or whatever, and we forgot about the people involved, and we forgot what I said before, it's a labor issue, so the two of them need to come together. We need to think about the people who are doing the job, trying to improve the working conditions, and also at the same time. So it's very complicated, it's not easy, but I do think we need to be aware that the two of them need to come together. It can be one or the other, and it can be, yes, we're going to include them because the IDB or, or, or whoever is, is telling us. It needs to be because you believe on that, and because you have the, 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 the people already doing that job, so why not? Why not? Uh, create a mix systems where the informal sector can be integrated properly as well as um, as the solid waste management as a whole is upgrading in the region. Yeah, we have a yeah. comment from we have a comment from Eric Feinblatt of Waste for Life. He's uh, commenting on the situation in Argentina. He says that 95 percent of the waste in Argentina uh, is recycled by the informal sector, but recycling levels themselves are only at 11 percent. Uh, but I think this comes back to what you're saying, Lucia. That uh, uh, at the moment we we don't have the we don't have the the legal framework to to actually promote or ensure higher levels of recycling. But if we if we start to have that in in various countries of the region, we're starting to see the development of the legal framework. But we can do that based on what is actually happening in the country, build on existing systems, uh, and help uh, or uh, support the integration of of uh, waste pickers into into these formal systems, then you 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 you're not reinventing the wheel. You're you're creating what could what is a sustainable uh, right. local system. I saw, okay. I saw his comment, and I, it's actually interesting because in the case of Buenos Aires, you do have a legal framework, but somehow now the system is changing, and they have containers everywhere. So I think the the 11 percent is going to be even less if the government is not taking the right decisions to improve recycling rates. You know, the informal sector uh, is possibly no longer able to recycle if the government doesn't allow them to access to the waste. So it's it's even more, unfortunately, it's even more complicated. It's, uh, sometimes you do have the legal framework and still the decisions are, are taken in the wrong direction. Well, first of all, you know, I have to say, sometimes you find uh, municipal governments that are very willing to work with waste pickers, but very often, and I'm not just talking about that in America, really anywhere in the world, uh, it's act it could actually be the opposite, and governments may be uh, very um, hesitant to work with informal actors. Uh, you know, an informal actor is kind of an unknown qu quantity for a for an institution like a municipal government. So, um, and I think that what you find is that in the process of working and developing relationships between a specific uh, municipal government and a specific um, a group of waste pickers that enthusiasm actually in, improves, that the relationship actually in, in, in improves. And well, first of all, I think that Lu Lucia was already talking about some of the benefits. Very obvious benefits are, are cost savings to the municipality. Uh, the waste pickers are providing services that are not being provided elsewhere, sometimes involving uh, types of trash collection and, and fueling an entire recycling chain. That otherwise would not would simply not have those those uh, entry points for the waste. So um, then there are cost savings in terms of uh, transport. Depending on where the waste picking is being done, you may be saving money on um, transport, which is per weight, and that's all. That also includes uh, carbon emissions, gasoline that's not being uh, burned, and finally, and one of the most important things is landfill life. The more materials you take out of a landfill, the longer the landfill will last. And, and so these are very simple, some of the very simple basic things that a, a 
informal ways pickers can offer a municipality. Mm -hmm. One of the issues of the million issue is that there is, there is some misconception that working with the best speaker is like going back for rent or, or not doing a modern waste management system. But in, what, I'm, what I'm saying is what Lucia was saying before. So there is a misconception that if you work with waste pickers, you are not modern. You are not bringing a state of the art waste management system. And if you work with machines, if the process is automatic, you are very good and you are very successful, you know. But, uh, and we have in Latin America the possibility to do recycling, very efficient recycling with high intensive manpower. And we, we need to know this misconception that working with waste speakers is not learn. My view is that we have good opportunities in, in research and development, finding, finding ways to do recycling giving uh, uh, jobs to the people and having better better cities, you know. But my view is that if you want to intervene to do an intervention with the waste speakers, obviously the municipality must be a part of the intervention, you know. Because at the end, they do have the responsibility to maintain the cities clean, they do have the responsibility to bring jobs to the people, and, and, and they, they, they can make the rules for the municipality to, to, to have a better legal framework in the city. And at the, at the end, they are, they, are, they are the responsible, you know. And, and in some cities, when you go to a city and you see people on the street picking the ways with a, with a uniform, they don't have regulation, they don't have, they have different ways to to move the, 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 the recyclables from one place to another. They don't have an identification. Obviously, the city is not going to see very good. You know, the, 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 the margin of the city is, is bad. So if you want to have a clean city, a city which is in, in order, if you want to give uh, jobs to people, if you want to tell a successful story in recycling, so you have an opportunity in the university. Yes, I, w I was just thinking that um, uh, what Peter was saying, it's something that uh, we should insist on. The state uh, municipalities and the state as, uh, as a public system, they need to recognize the service that we speakers are providing to their cities. So yeah. this kind of misconception that Alfonso was talking about, we need to really work towards that change and a systemic approach and understanding that these people are actually providing a service for free. And something that was very interesting that happened recently in the past uh, year in Bogota, Colombia, is that the waste pickers actually were able to change the paradigm of uh, waste management and not only the system become public in the hands of the state again, but also they managed to do something that the Brazilians were able to do that before, but they are paid by the ton they collected. So they become public service providers, they become workers, they remain informal, but at least they have a compensation by the ton they collect. So they are like, um, they are like real workers. I mean, at the end, uh, after 27 years of struggle, they managed to be seen in a different way. They managed to, you know, to change the mindset of the government and say, okay, actually you are helping me as, a, as an official, as, an, as a government. Right? Actually, you are helping the city to be more clean, so why not I should pay you? And I think that was, I mean, for us, uh, in Vigo was one of the, the, the happiest uh, success uh, recently because uh, sometimes, you know, in Brazil, the government is proactive and because he's there as well. Uh, they they have been able to support the catadores, to support the Brazilian funding and and uh, different kinds of, of integrations, but it, it, it's very interesting to see that it's happening in other places of, of Latin America, it's happening in Argentina, despite the recent uh, change, it happened in Colombia, in Brazil, Bolivia, so you can see that they are, uh, little by little, start to be seen different, and hopefully in the future they can be integrated as, as public service providers and not be seen as 
as a, as a problem and not be seen as a, um, as a barrier that you need to overcome, but rather part of the solution and, and of course, to be uh, improved and integrated instead of uh, uh, removed.